In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in today's Gospel, we are facing our Lord Jesus Christ, approaching a village, and there he is faced by ten men that were suffering from, from, from leprosy. This was a very, very difficult illness that was literally eating men's skin. And at that time, they didn't have cure for it. And even for many years later on, probably a couple, ten, tens of years, we have the, the medicine for this. But long, for a long time, they didn't have the cure for it. And uh, unfortunately, the family families were divided. They were taken out, out from their houses, from their families, <coughs> villages, cities, and so on and so forth. They weren't allowed even to go into the temple to pray to God. They were separated either on desert, mountains, or isolated islands, and so on and so forth. But this man, with a loud voice, approached Jesus saying, help us. And here, he's not saying them that he's going to cure them, to heal them. But he's just saying what the law requested. Go and show yourselves to the priest. And while they went to the priest, on their way, they <coughs> were healed. They get cured. So <coughs> can you imagine suffering from, some, from something that you know that there is no cure for it? And over a sudden, you, you are healed. You became well again. A fully functional person. What a happiness, what a joy. But unfortunately, this joy, it's human and temporary because they didn't, did not come back to give thanks to the one that cured them. So, and how many of us, my dear ones, are suffering by the spiritual leprosy. And you would ask me, what is the spiritual leprosy? It's our hatred against each other. It's our evil thoughts. It's adultery. Fornification. homosexuality, and so on and so forth. There are so many. This is the spiritual leprosy that we are suffering today. The entire society, one of 10, as the gospel said, just one came back to give thanks to the Lord for, to his benefactor. And he was amazed. What are the nine? Weren't the, the 10 that got healed, right? He cured all of them. They asked him to do so, and he did. So do you see his unlimited love for humankind? Even though, as God, he knew that they would be ungrateful. And so are we, are we ungrateful. And to understand this, this better, let's look all of us pretty much are parents here. We know how difficult it is to raise a child, right? But how many times 
we are confronting them being ungrateful. They think that because we gave birth to them, we have to do everything they are asking for. Right? So the same thing we are doing with God. Well, you gave me life, whatever, you have to, to give me everything. We are taking things for granted. Well, right? As I said, the, 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 the kids with their parents. Well, you have to. Well, we have to do one thing. We have to bring them to God. Yes. With that, I agree. But with everything else, oh, I want a new Nintendo or PlayStation or Xbox or whatever, whatever, whatever. There's so many. A new game and I don't know what, what else. So, and if you don't do, or if you don't give them permission to go to have sleepover or whatever, I don't know what, what else they can ask. Oh, they became your worst enemy, right? Because you want the best for them. You want to protect them. And you turn into their enemy. They are seeing it, you, as their enemy. Instead of giving thanks that they have protecting and loving parents, thinking about their future, they are turning against you. So the same thing we are doing with God. We are turning against God. Because he is so protective. He is so loving. He gave his only begotten son to be crucified for our own salvation. Right? And this is what we are doing. We did not only crucify him 2,000 years ago, but every day. Every single day with our actions, with our passions, and so on and so forth. So we are the same children, even though we are grown ups. We're still, in, before God, we are kids. And many of us are troublemakers. I can say probably 90% of us, if not more. Because who is there holy and sinless? God alone. More or less, we all have faults. We all have sins. There is no one on earth except God that took flesh and became incarnate. He was the only one without sin. So, now that we understand that we all are suffering by the spiritual leprosy, we have to cry out to him to heal us through repentance, confession. And saying, talking about repentance with uh, the God grace, now third day, the icon that used to be here, now it's on the holy table, is tearing, is weeping from started on Friday during the Holy Unction. So, and if you can feel that it's a smell, it's coming from back there. So, he's with us. He's calling us to repentance. Because this entire world, while we lock down the, the churches, we, we're not allowing people to venerate. So what is this if it's not his grace? So how can those that said not to touch or to kiss the icons anymore, what can they, how they can explain this phenomenon? So by kissing the icon, you're going to get a virus or another illness? That's there to think, even to think, not to, to say. So that's pretty much so you see that the evil one is because he feel, feels that his time is coming, the end is coming. So he is using all the weapons possible and impossible against us, locking down the churches. Now the nativity is approaching. So the people in various countries are not allowed 
to attend the, the, the service for the nativity or epiphany or other services. So he, he's depriving us, dividing us, preserving us from venerating Christ, being connected, united with Christ, because he knows that the Holy Communion is the spring of life. So is the source of life. And of course, because he feels that his time is coming, now more and more using the politicians, using the church leaders, and so on and so forth. So this is what is truly happening. This is the leprosy of our days. So we have to get rid of it. And the medicine is only here, is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the actual medicine. This is the vaccine that we need to take. Everything else, man-made, who cares about? We are taking the vaccine every single divine liturgy. Why should I take a vaccine? Who knows what they are putting in that vaccine, right? I have my vaccine here. And because of what happened with the icon, I will start the liturgies from tomorrow. I will do Monday evening liturgy, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then uh, Thursday. We'll do, try to do more liturgies, especially that the school is closed now, so I can do more. We have to. We have to pray. So this, this is telling us something. We have to pray more. We have to repent. We have to, to come back to our senses. Because we lost our identities. We forgot who we are. And by, by doing this, what we are doing, by what is happening right now, we are turning from the image and likeness of God into animals. And by saying animals, I'm, I'm not talking about the, the pet, the animal. I'm talking about what we are turning into uh, in a bad way, because the animals are innocent. But we, by losing the image and likeness of God, we are becoming, becoming real animals. So let's think about this, my dear ones. Let's emphasize the words of God that we heard in today's gospel. And let's work towards our spiritual growth. Because this is, as I said, this is the, prim the, the medicine. This is the antivirus. So only through God. He is the only source of life. There, except God, there is nothing else. So ch the church has its own law, laws. The law of God. This is what we are obeying to. As I said the other day, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So we are paying taxes and everything that's fine, but we have to pay our taxes to God, which is our love towards each other. It's our support towards each other. As I said, we shall live like a family, like the first Christians, the first era, they were living together. Everything was in common, not like now. Some, some, someone is starving and doesn't even look to those, those that have many and much more than they suppose. But this again is the gift of God. It's nothing that we have that is ours, right? Nothing belongs truly to us. We are just users. So as long we are here, we are using God's gifts. But one day we will have to return back what we receive. And what we're going to say, oh, I just buried it in the ground because I was afraid, or what else? So let's, let's pay attention. Let's prepare. Let's try to make our hearts the manger to bring Christ in our soul because 
Remember, I said we are created into God's likeness in image. So our body, through the baptism that we will receive, we became the temple of God. Through baptism, we are dressed in Christ. We are wearing Christ. So, and through, through the baptism, our heart, our soul became that cave, that manger, in which the Holy Spirit shall dwell in. So let, let us preserve it clean there in order to live in us. Because if we are turning, as I said in the beginning, into all these idolatric passions, because this is what we pretty much are doing. We're becoming idolaters, idolizing all these passions, the carnal passions. We are living for them, and we are joy, enjoying them. So what is this? It's idolatry. That's idolatry. So instead of worshiping God, we are, we are worshiping our body. Now, both and women and men, whatever they like, they, they don't like the way, the way they look. They do plastic surgeries and change their look and change the gender and whatever other cra craziness comes in their mind. So what is this? Yes, this is idolatry because we are idolizing our own body, our own personality. We are worshiping ourselves. This is what we are doing. So let us wake up because we need this spiritual awakeness. We need it. So let us wake up. Let us prepare. Let us cleanse our souls and bodies through holy confession. Let us come closer to each other first and to God because to reach God, first of all, we have to love each other, to understand each other, to understand ourselves. You cannot meet God if you don't know yourself. Many times I said, we, we think that we know ourselves, but we don't. We don't. So let's learn who we are, our true identity, not what we think about ourselves and not, not what we are presenting to others about ourselves but our true identity, our true self. This is what we need to, to learn in order to become godlike. So let us prepare, my dear ones, spiritually, because this is the time for spiritual growth. We need to come closer to God. If we want to be saved, that's the only way. Christ. I am the way, the light, and the life. So let's follow this way, this path. Let, let's follow the life, the true life, the true son, the resurrected God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you all.